What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week one deadline, a series that I'm going to run throughout this entire season every single week, talking about the latest team news, answering some of your last minute questions and talking about my own team as well. If you're excited for it to be back, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 500k and also check out Sleeper if you haven't already. Completely free fantasy football app using the links in the description below. More on that to come later. So let's start with what Marco Silva said about Emil Smith-Rowe because he's quite a popular pick at 5.5 million. He said he hasn't played games consistently so it's going to be a process for him to be in his best physical condition but we have already seen that he can make an impact. He can make a difference. Two goals in two games is a good start and he went on to say the main thing for me was his desire to join our football club. At his best level he's going to be a great player for us. When I saw a player of his talent and his desire to come to Fulham that's what pushed me to sign him. So it seems pretty clear he's going to be part of the first 11 long term. It's just about whether he's ready to go for game week one. And obviously that's what people want to know, right? Should you buy him? I think look, it wouldn't be a shock if he was benched in game week one. Because as Marcus Silva said, he hasn't played consistently for basically two years now. And he's got to build up to that level of match fitness. But I do think it's more likely that he starts... Then he doesn't. I think him starting then coming off like 60, 65 minutes is probably more likely than him being on the bench. It probably also depends on where he fits into your structure. If you've built a squad where you've got to start him every single week, then perhaps there is a little bit too much risk there and you should go for a different 5.5, maybe Brereton Diaz at Southampton, for example. If he's going to be on your bench game week one as part of a rotation... I think it's safe enough to go for him. Like Man United away in game week one is not a terrible fixture, but realistically, it's Leicester at home and Ipswich away in game weeks two and three that people really want him for. So I think he will start, but come off early. But I wouldn't be completely shocked if he's benched. So I'm sure most of you have already seen that Oscar Bob has picked up a pretty bad injury. This is the news that came out on Thursday. He's flying to Barcelona to get an operation on a fractured fibula. I think that's how you say it due tomorrow the man city forward is initially expected to miss between three and four months hopefully he comes back and does really well because a lot of people are expecting this to be his breakout season but obviously from an fpl point of view you just can't pick him in game week one ideally i think you'd find more money to go up to like a 5.5 million midfielder but if you've got a structure that you're really happy with and you want to keep that five million pound slot i think rogers at aston villa is probably the best option done really well during pre-season and is likely to get minutes early on. Now, I don't think anyone, even Aston Villa fans, can promise you that he'll still be playing in kind of six, seven, eight game weeks time. But for five million, your expectations have got to be pretty low. And if he does get regular game time, he'll be a really good option. It's not ideal that they play Arsenal at home in game week two. But if he's still playing from game week three onwards, the fixtures are really good. And also, you know, someone like this at five million, even like Bob, if he'd been fit, really this should be your eighth attacker. I don't think anyone should be setting up a squad where they've got to play Rodgers every single week. So he's probably where I would go to. A few people have mentioned Sinistera to me uh, at Bournemouth. I just think most of their attackers, there's no guarantee which ones are going to start every week and how many minutes they're going to get. Like Sinistera apparently has done pretty well during pre-season, which is a good sign. But I, I can't sit here and tell you that I know he's still going to be playing in a few game weeks' time. So there's not a huge amount of other standout options at that price. You've got Adama Traore at uh, Fulham. I think he will probably start the season. Will he keep his place? We just don't know. I think if I was punting on a 5 million, uh, it's got to be Rodgers. But Bob, unfortunately, not an option for game week one. So I've partnered with Sleeper for the 2024-25 season. This is a great time to get the app downloaded. It's completely free and has a ton of social features such as live updates, news and the ability to chat to other people within the app. As well as that, it has free fantasy football games such as Premier League Draft. You can see the mock draft that I did the other day and all the picks that I went for on screen. There's a ton of customization. You can basically set the draft up however you want rule-wise. You can even change the point scoring system as well. With their Premier League Pick'em game, all you have to do is predict the results of every game each weekend so you can see here i've gone for man united liverpool arsenal nottingham forest and newcastle wins in game week one and if you set up a league with your friends you can also chat to them within the app as the scores are updating when the matches are live you can join the let's talk fpl pick em league by clicking that link in the description below or scanning the qr code on screen to see if you can beat me there's going to be prizes on offer all season including a premier league shirt of your choice to the winner in game week one 
And if it's a tie, we'll do a randomizer on the deadline stream to see who's won. Make sure you check it out. Completely free to download. Loads of great features. Loads of great free fantasy football games as well. Just click the link in the description below. So everybody wants to know, is Dominic Solanke going to start in game week one? And Ange Postacoglu was asked about what he's been like in training. And this is what he said. Thankfully, it is what we expected. He is a top pro, a good guy. He has sort of settled into the dressing room really well. Footballing-wise, you can see he has the attributes that kind of fit into what we want to do really well. There is still an adjustment period there as we play a little bit differently and train differently. And we have seen that with every new signing that comes in. So far, he is fitting really well with the group and training. We still have a couple of sessions to go, but so far, so good. And then someone asked, will he be good to go on Monday? And he said, yeah, he should be. So that sounds overall pretty positive. I think he's going to throw him straight in. Because you could play Kulisewski 9, and he has done well during preseason. But is that something he wants to do in the Premier League? I'm not so sure. Richarlison is back now in training as well. But he hasn't had much of a preseason, right? No, no more than Dominic Solanke anyway. So I personally think he's going to get thrown straight in. But it's a bit like Smith Rowe. Would it be a complete shock if Dominic Solanke was on the bench? No, I don't think it would be. But my gut instinct says he's going to play, but probably going to come off slightly earlier than we've seen at Bournemouth. So maybe 70, 75 minutes in the first game, something like that. Could be enough against Leicester away. Everton at home in two is good. It is then Newcastle away and Arsenal at home, which is a bit trickier for Spurs for sure. But I think he's a good option to start the season in that even if he doesn't play game week one, you'd imagine he comes in game week two. And then probably keeps his place as long as he keeps performing. I'm going back and forth, I mean, on every single player available. But definitely with Solanke. Because I think 7.5 is a good price. And I've all of a sudden, you know, lost a little bit of love for João Pedro, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I look at those fixtures now. I think if he doesn't hit the ground running in 1 and 2, like what am I really expecting from Newcastle away and Arsenal at home? It's not going to be a big haul or anything like that. And there's lots of good players around 5.5 and 6 million that I could go for instead. So my draft structure the other day had a cheap forward in and not Solanke. And I thought about getting the money for him. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, If I had to put my own money on whether he's going to start or not, I think I'd say yes. I'm, I don't know if I'm that sure to put him into my FPL team. But either way, that's what Postacoglu has said. He mentioned previously, by the way, that Van der Ven came straight into the team, even though he'd only been there like three or four days. So he's not afraid of throwing someone straight in. So I think he'll start. If you want to go for him, he's a pretty good pick. Whether he gets a huge amount in three and four remains to be seen, but he's definitely got the capabilities. So quick update from Nuno at Nottingham Forest after he was asked whether any of the players have got issues. He said, we always have issues, but not big ones, unfortunately. And apparently there's no fresh injury concerns ahead of the game week one fixture. So the likes of Chris Wood, uh, Gibbs White, etc. should be good to go. A few people have been asking about Chris Wood you know should he come in instead of João Pedro instead of Muniz I do like him for the first three game weeks Bournemouth at home Southampton away and Wolves at home it gets a little bit trickier after that with the Liverpool uh, away game and then I think it's Brighton away straight after as well but then it's Fulham at home in game week six so first six game weeks the two tough fixtures are really in four and five so in the very short term I don't think it's a terrible idea to go back to Chris Wood like he's done really well in preseason he scored a bunch of goals last year as well I do think he's going to be first choice the key question is how long will that remain because if our knee can get himself properly fit and he remains available and he has been playing a little bit during preseason he probably is the main striker that Nuno would want to play I, I just think with how well Chris Wood has done there's no rush to put our knee in so hopefully you would get the first two three weeks Again, longer term than that, it's really anyone's guess. And unfortunately, because of just you know new players coming in, fitness issues, Copper America, Euros and stuff like that, there's a lot more question marks than normal. So I think first two to three weeks, if you want to go for Chris Wood, solid enough option. Longer term, I just think Aaron E will probably come back in at some point and they won't play together. And Gibbs White's kind of the forgotten man and the 6.5 million price point. Not that exciting, has lost some set pieces, but should still take penalties and has got three good fixtures to start. So if you're unsure about other 6.5s in terms of their minutes and stuff like that, Gibbs White is not a bad option to go for. And defensively, there could be some clean sheets early on as well. So this is what Hertzler has said for Brighton. SGP, Nian and Lamptey are back on the pitch. Ferguson will be too. So it's great news, but I'm not sure if they're ready for the first match. 
I think that the squad who played against Villarreal, all of them should be ready. So no fresh injury concerns from the last friendly. They're all good to go again. But they have got some players back. They're not going to play in the first match. They've not had a pre-season. But, they, but a couple of them, like Eschepinian and Ferguson in particular, that looks as though they could be back a bit sooner than what people were originally predicting. And that causes a headache to other players we might want to put in, like João Pedro, Minta, and Barco. Plus, they're still signing players as well. So take Barco, for example. Eschepinian is competition for the left-back spot. They're still on about signing that guy from Fenerbahce that can play anywhere, including left-back. So as quickly as Barco looks like a great option... He might be back out of the team. Now, he's only 4 million, and if he's your fifth uh, fifth defender, there's not really a huge amount of risk there other than the fact he could drop in price. But I'm starting to wonder whether it's even worth it. I think if, if Brighton had better fixtures straight away, I'd be more willing to chance it. But Everton away, Man United at home, and Arsenal away is just not that great. And if you lose them after that, well, that's super frustrating ahead of their better fixtures. So... I think my general viewpoint with Barco is if you cannot find 0.5 million from anywhere, you just go with him. If you can spare it and the rest of the squad looks great, you're probably better off getting a safer 4.5 million defender that you can call upon later on. Like There is definitely upside with Barco if he stays in the team. I'm just worried about his minutes. With João Pedro, they're on about signing Rutter from Leeds. He can play in the number 10 spot. That might mean that João Pedro plays number 9, which sounds great. But Welbeck's there. If Ferguson's back soon as well, that's another problem. And of course, João Pedro can play wide too, but they've got a ton of wide options as well. Like Grud is there. He's probably going to need time. I, I don't know. Brighton, because of how good we've seen them be in the past, and their squad is just decent, and the prices in FPL are cheap, I really want to go for them. I want them to be still playing for me in game weeks four and five with the really good fixtures come. I'm not sure I'm going for two or three of them. I think one max for me two at a push there's no way i'd put three in my team like barco at four million is probably worth it for the upside Jao pedro i just think for 0.5 million more i can get a pretty much nailed on starter in the long term like Meniz at fulham i don't know i just don't think i can go for brian but either way no fresh injuries they've got players back they're going to cause us a headache and they're still making sign-ins you can take the risk but just know it is a little bit of risk even now though sorry to ramble on Jao pedro is so good if he starts he could just stay on the team and 5.5 could be such good value, but I don't know, for 0.5 million more, I just think you get someone safer. Take the risk if you want. Barco's probably fine. He's only 4 million. All right, let's get into some of your questions. So to start the season, would you go for Gabriel for the higher goal threat or Saliba for the security of minutes? Now, I don't know if I'm going to end up with an Arsenal defender in my own team, but if I do, it'll probably be Gabriel for that extra uh, attacking threat. It's not that Saliba can't get you goals. We saw in the last preseason friendly for Arsenal that both of these players scored. But generally, Gabriel is the main man that they look to target from set pieces. And if you've got to play him in some of those tougher away games early on, then the likelihood of getting a clean sheet is low. You want that attacking potential. I will say, though, this time last year, I said pretty much the same thing. I would definitely go for Gabriel over Saliba, and he was benched in game week one. I don't expect that to happen again, but there is more risk there than with Saliba, especially when Timber and Calafori are kind of up to being able to play more regularly Arteta might mix things around it won't happen with Saliba so I guess one of your decisions could be how long term does this have to be if you're guaranteeing that you're going to wildcard in four or six maybe go for Gabriel as the bit more um I don't know interesting pit that's more likely to get you the attacking returns if you don't want to wildcard that early then Saliba is probably a bit safer so with all the uncertainty is a game week four wildcard not more appealing now more appealing than what I don't know but that was the question and I've seen a lot of people talk about this strategy, and it kind of makes sense, right? You only focus on the first three game weeks. You try and maximize the points from that. You're not planning longer term. And by the time game week three is over, the transfer window will be shut ahead of game week four. We'll have the international break as well. We'll know who's getting minutes, who's in the 11, who's built up uh, match fitness as well after missing preseason. Lots of information to be gathered. So I quite like the idea of a game week four wildcard, but I'm still not sure I want to lock into doing that i mean i'm going to be looking what four to six game weeks ahead anyway but the primary focus will be the first few weeks right so if i'm deciding between two players and one's got better fixtures in the short term that's who i'm going to go for it's one of the reasons why i'm starting to get a bit more wary about brighton because their good fixtures are from four onwards so maybe i can just bring them in later 
I just don't know if I want to lock myself in. Plus, in game week six, you've got another little bit of a fixture swing with Arsenal in particular, where they've got Leicester at home and Southampton at home. Whereas in four and five, they got tricky away games. Am I going to want a wild card and have two or three of their players in game week four? Not necessarily. And they're likely to be one of the key teams that I want to pick players from. So I'm open to going game week four, but I'm not going to go into game week one absolutely locking in that strategy basically and also i don't know if anyone else feels like this but with all the uncertainty it just makes me want to pick safer players which is not exciting i get that right and i'm not going to have that many punts in my team but having players that are going to start is kind of handy and that might not force you to wild card so early and if things are going well you just delay it until later on so i've heard lots of good fpl managers talk about game week four game week six wild cards they both look pretty good and if you want to lock yourself into that that's perfectly fine my strategy generally is you're looking forward to six weeks anyway you're pri- prioritizing the, the the game weeks that are closer is what i'm trying to say and be open-minded if i get to game week three even and things are looking really bad for my team i'll wild card if i need to and i think this season with the rolling transfers if i've already banked a couple then wild carding looks even better because i know i've got transfers the other side to deal with it so game week four wild card perfectly fine am i locking myself into that no so do you have any thoughts about the rumors of Eze to man city if he goes what's your alternative options for 6.5 million so it does feel like the rumor that won't go away and sometimes there's no smoke without fire but there also doesn't seem to be anything that concrete in this move either i think the last thing i saw on the athletic was you know he's part of the conversation but there's a lot of players they're looking at it's not like he's their number one target like i haven't seen fabrizio romano or david ornstein or anyone like that say that man city really want him they're readying a bid or anything like that so it could happen right these things can sometimes move quickly but i'm not sure like basically the info we have about this right now is not putting me off picking Eze. if we get to tomorrow's deadline there's something more concrete i will probably take him out but as it stands i plan to go with him another thing by the way that Eze's name started to come up a little bit more after oscar bob got injured and I'm sure Eze is good enough to play right wing, but that's not his position, right? He usually plays left or central, not on the right. So it's not like he's a direct replacement anyway. So yeah, I'm planning on keeping him. In terms of alternative options, right? So if I just go to midfielders, we'll order it by price and go to... We'll go to 7 million, right? Because that's Eze's uh, price. Martinelli and Trossard. I think Martinelli will probably start the season as first choice left wing for Arsenal. How long he keeps that spot for? Probably not... an. There's not enough uh, certainty there for me to go for him. In Burma, I quite like because they've got Palace at home, Southampton at home, first three. But they do also have Liverpool away in game week two, City away in four, and Spurs away in five, which is not quite so good. If Tony was going to go, I'd probably put in Burma in for the penalties. I think there's enough there for me to not go for him. Sterling, Chelsea, I just don't know who's going to start. I'm sure in Kunku and Palmer will, but outside of that, I don't know. And Rashford, I guess most people just don't want to go for him. I don't think he's a terrible option. I know I put him in my draft, got absolutely slated for it, but I'm pretty confident his minutes will be good early on. And the fixtures are not that bad for Man United. Not great. Brighton away two, Liverpool at home three, Southampton at home four, but not that bad. And Fulham at home game week one's all right. 6.5s. I think Nkunku's my favourite, which at this point you know. Like Man City, Doku might play now. Savio might play, but I can't guarantee it. So Boss Sly, we've got a question about him later on, but spoiler alert, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of him either. Like Leon Bailey's not bad, but you've got West Ham away Arsenal at home first too. I think right now, I'd put the order something like Nkunku first, and then I'm really stuck for the second 6.5. I've got Garnacho in my current draft, and I think his long-term minutes will be good, but I can't guarantee you he'll start in game week one. I think Kulisevsky and Brennan Johnson might be sharing a spot, so I would just ignore both of them. Like, Matoma just feels a bit expensive given Brighton's fixtures. Barnes, not a guaranteed starter for Newcastle. Kudus will almost certainly play, but West Ham's fixtures aren't necessarily ideal, but maybe you overlook that. Like, 6.5, there's not... All of a sudden, to me at least, it doesn't feel like there's a huge amount of options. So if if Eze... If Eze seems like he's going to leave, I may even try and find the money to go 7.5 and get Gordon or Jotter in instead. Or just go for Rashford. Like, if you've already got Nkunku, I'm not sure there's a huge amount of great uh, other 6.5 options, unless we know Garnacho is going to start. But even then, you've got Rashford Ama- and Amad Diallo. I think Garnacho's minutes long term will be good. 
So yeah, not not in my opinion, there's not actually a huge amount of great 6.5s. Gibbs White, I should not forget him. First three game weeks look pretty good. Not that exciting from open play, but on penalties too. That's the other one. So is Kwanzaa a good pick until wildcard six? I'm sure he starts game week one, but I'm not convinced he stays there for six games. That is basically the long and the short of it, right? Most people expect him to start in game week one. It's not a guarantee, but it looks likely based on his preseason minutes. After that, it's anyone's guess, right? And no one can tell you with any certainty at what point he stops playing because Kanate is not just going to get phased out completely. I just don't see that happening. It doesn't mean that Kwanzaa is a bad pick, though, because at 4.5 million, there's a lot of value there being a Liverpool defender. So it really depends on what part of your squad he's making up, right? If he's your third defender and you've gone for two, four million defenders on the bench, that's probably a little bit too risky for me. But if Kwanzaa is your fourth or fifth defender, where if he misses out, it's not going to cause you huge issues, then you can probably go for him. Because if he does keep his place up until you wildcard, Liverpool do have a bunch of good fixtures you could play him in, right? The only one where you maybe don't expect a clean sheet in the first five is United away. Like Liverpool could win that game, but getting a clean sheet is going to be tough. Ipswich away, Brentford at home, Forest at home, Bournemouth at home, all really good. So I think because of those fixtures and because of his price, he could be worth the risk depending on when you're setting, oh sorry, depending on how you're setting your squad up. Here's what I would say though. Look at your squad, right? Run it through a plan like the My Team Tour and Hub, etc., and think to yourself, if he loses his place in game week two, how much of an issue does that cause the rest of my squad? If he loses it in game week three instead, how much of an issue is that going to be? And if the issue is not really there, you can just bench him or maybe move him on when you've got a spare transfer. Just go for him. Like, there's not a huge amount of great 4.5 million defenders that got tons of attacking threat, great fixtures, and are 100% nailed on. So taking the odd risk is fine, but I wouldn't take too many in your initial squad. Like, maybe one or two slightly riskier picks the other thing quickly as well i'm not sure about whether i'm going to put him in my squad i just feel like is there a huge amount of upside there with him like he doesn't have massive attacking threat that we know of like that might come but van dyke's probably the main goal threat for liverpool from set pieces so attacking returns i'm not sure of that of course he could go and get you some clean sheets but he could also just lose his place so if i'm taking a a risk is it going to be with my 4.5 million defender or am I more likely to do it in a tap? I don't know. I don't see Kwanzaa being in my team, but I can maybe talk myself into that by tomorrow. I think if he's fourth or fifth defender, that's probably fine. By the way, I say I can talk myself into that by tomorrow, but that's because I'm recording it on Thursday, forgetting the video is not going out to Friday. So yeah, by Friday's deadline, basically. So could Saboslai be a decent differential over Jota? He's £1 million cheaper, and I'm concerned about Jota's long-term minutes. I mean, I would say that Jota is already a differential in itself right it's not like his ownership is sky high overall i don't particularly like saboslai as a pick there is definitely potential there for 6.5 million given the fixtures that liverpool have got but i don't think there's a guarantee that he always plays number 10 for them but that's what people are expecting like a 4-2-3-1 set up on paper and saboslai getting forward and that is likely what's going to happen but it's not a guarantee harvey elliott could get minutes in that position and also because Liverpool haven't signed a number six like the Zuba Mendy deal has fallen through they might be looking at other players of course but they're not going to get them now for the start of the season so boss like could play a bit deeper and that's what worries me if we had lots of evidence that he was going to play 10 and get forward with the fixtures he'd probably be in my team already but I just think there's enough there to just be a little bit uncertain about it like I'm sure he'll start quite regularly for Liverpool it's just a case of in which position so I probably wouldn't go for him like, if Jota gets minutes, he will be better than Saboslai, but that's not a guarantee either. And, like, I know it's boring to listen to because I feel like I could go through a ton of players and say, not sure if they're going to get long-term minutes, not sure if they're going to start game week one. But that is the reality, and that's why I'm saying you shouldn't put a huge amount of these players in your team. There is massive upside with someone like Jota if he starts the first kind of two, three, four fixtures. And I think he will start against Ipswich in game week one. But how long will he be on the pitch for? I don't know. Could he get sub 60, 70 minutes for Darwin Nunez? Possibly. Will he still be in the game, uh, team game week two? I don't know. Will he still be in their game week three? I'm just not sure, right? And again, if you've got a squad which is full of safe picks and Jota's your only risk, not a huge issue whatsoever, but you've got to be conscious of the fact that he could become a problem that you've got to transfer out quite soon. Now, at 7.5 minutes, it's quite a nice price tag because if he plays two or three games and then you've got to get rid of him, you'll know which 6.5s and 5.5s are looking good. 
and you can just downgrade him. But there are obviously long term issues with his minutes. We essentially we just don't know how slot is going to set up, which players is he going to prefer, and how long are they on the pitch for in each game. So I'm not keen on either of these players, but if one of them makes it into my team, it'll be Jota. So nice and simple, is Dominic Calvert-Lewin overlooked? And the answer has to be yes. I've hardly seen anyone talk about him, and I've barely given him any thought either, if I'm honest. But this question did get me thinking about him as a pick. So he's 6 million, so the same price as like a Meniz uh, or a Chris Wood or someone like that. And the fixtures actually aren't that bad for Everton early on. It's Brighton at home game week one, so Calvert-Lewin's going to be the one to wipe out that Barco clean sheet. Spurs away in two, Bournemouth at home in three, Leicester away in four, and uh, sorry, Villa away in four, and Leicester away in five. So three away games, first five, two of them are Spurs and Villa. It's not great, but the home games aren't bad. And he is a player that we've seen do very well in the past. Now, I think one reason he's not being considered is because of his injury record. But actually, if you look at last season, he got 26 starts. So he actually did all right last season in terms of staying fit, just over 2,000 minutes. But that's the first time he's done that since 2020. 21 in terms of competition like you know Beto's there as well but he hasn't played as much during preseason. they've got more pay i don't expect him to start ahead of calvert lewin uh, ndi definitely have definitely just said that wrong n-d-i-a-y-e uh he could play I'm not sure if he's going to start straight away but he'll come into the team eventually but it could be him and calvert lewin depending on how sean dyche wants to set up so i i think calvert lewin will start the season and i think brighton and bournemouth at home first three is not bad I could, I could see him scoring in those games. But I, I don't think I can sit here and say I think he's better than Chris Wood for those three games or that he's better than Meniz longer term. Cavalier would be on penalties though, presumably. And I've, I've started with him before and he's done great for me. And if he keeps his place, the long-term fixtures are great if he can stay fit. It's just too many questions. I, and also, I, I, I'm looking back at the fixture now, like Spurs and Villa away first four. I don't particularly like. But then again, the Spurs defense wasn't amazing last year. But we're all playing poro against Everton. I, I, he is being overlooked. Maybe a little bit harshly so. But I think if I was picking between him, Chris Wood and Meniz, he'd probably be third pick for me. So I'm going to end by talking about my own team. And just a warning, this will almost certainly turn into a bit of a ramble because I'm not quite sure where I'm going to land in terms of the exact structure or the exact players I'm going to go for. At the moment, it's still set the same as it was in the team selection video. So Henderson in goal. Back three of Porro, Gabriel, and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Midfield is Eze, Garnacho, Saka, and Nkunku. So two 6.5 million midfielders. Then Haaland, Izak, and Jao Pedro up front. And the bench is a 4 million goalkeeper, Smith Rowe, Robinson, and then Barco, who we've spoken about quite a lot at this point. I look at that team, and, and do I think that's what I'm going to go into game week one with? Probably not, because something will come up tomorrow in the press conferences. I'll get a last-minute kind of... I don't know, desire to go for a player that I've barely even thought about up until this stage. It always happens. So it's probably not going to be the team for game week one, but I'm not sure it's that far off either. Like when I think about the overall structure, I think it looks pretty good. Like what am I missing? I guess Salah, but that requires me to drop Haaland or to completely, like basically make a bunch of sacrifices that I've said before I don't really want to do. And I guess I also don't have like a Solanke or a Gordon, or a Jota at the 7.5 million price point. I really don't think that's the end of the world. Obviously, I could have stuff like Vardio instead of Gabriel. I could have Son instead of Saka. You know, that's personal preference. But in terms of the structure, I think that looks pretty good. Which players are locked in? I think I'm going to end up with Dean Henderson. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up with Porro as well. I really want Trent, but I'm not against downgrading him for money elsewhere. I'm going to go for Nkunku unless Maresca says something about his fitness in the press conference on Friday because I just think for 6.5, that's good value. Saka will be my premium midfielder if I go for a 10 million. I'm not going to find the money to go for Palmer. Eze, unless there's a strong rumour on Friday that he's going to Man City, Haaland and Isaac, and then a £4 million goalkeeper. So eight picks are locked in. Everyone else is up for grabs. If I had to say right now what the most likely move for my team is, is to downgrade Gabriel, not just swap him to Vardio or someone like that, is to downgrade him completely. Because, I don't know, I keep coming back to the Arsenal fixtures. I know we've spoken about them so much, but I just don't see clean sheets against Villa, Spurs and Man City. And of course, I could just go for him, play him against Wolves and Brighton at home in one and three, and use him as part of a rotation for the other game weeks. But it doesn't feel great to have a £6 million defender that I'm only really wanting to play twice in the first five game weeks. 
I mean, ultimately, premium defenders are not... Or, or part of the advantage to having them is that if you have to play them in tougher fixtures, they could always nick you a clean sheet because they're part of the better defences. They could nick you a goal. So if I had to play them against Villa or Spurs away, not terrible. But it's not really something I want to do. It just doesn't feel right to set my squad up like that in game week one. If, by the way, I had Gabriel, I don't know, it was game week 10, and he was coming into those fixtures, and he'd done really well, and he had great fixtures afterwards, I'd already used my wild card, I'd almost certainly hold on to him, right? But it's different in game week one, because you can completely change your squad as many times as you want, and getting rid of Gabriel is probably something I want to do. So if I'm going to downgrade him, there's not a huge amount of other options at 5.5 outside of Poro that I like. And most of the defenders at 5 million, I've not written off, but I don't see me going with them. Like someone like Matson for Villa could be great if he's first choice. But if he's first choice, could he then play in the Champions League and they might play one of their other left backs in the Premier League? You just don't know. And also the first couple of fixtures for Villa aren't great. Obviously, Estupinian's injured. Gusto may be at Chelsea, but Man City at home, Wolves away first two don't look great. After that, it's not bad. And Reese James is injured again, so Gusto will probably get a good run in the side. I'm not against going for him, but I, I just don't see me spending five million. It would probably be on someone like Munoz instead. And maybe I'm overthinking at this point, but I, I just don't know how many clean sheets Palace are going to get. And plus, I've already got Henderson, so I don't know if I want to double up. So he's kind of written off as well, unless I go to Flecken. So I'm probably just going to go to a 4.5. Now, as much as I've talked about 4.5 million defenders so often during preseason, I also feel like I've not given it enough time to see how the rotations work. But I think Konza is someone I quite like because long-term Aston Villa's fixtures are good and there's plenty of game weeks where he could cover me if needed. Like Leicester away, Everton at home, Wolves at home, Ipswich away between game weeks three to six, Bournemouth at home in nine, Fulham away in eight. They're not bad fixtures considering he's uh, 4.5. That would give me 1.5 million in the bank. And another move I'm considering is Smith Rowe down to Rodgers. Now, I think Smith Rowe is the better option. And I think that he's more likely to keep his place in the side long term. I, I don't think many people would question that. But Rogers is cheaper. That then gives me two million to spend. And I think the most likely use of those funds would be Garnacho to Fernandez to make sure that I've just got a solid option that's always going to start and definitely going to start game week one. Or I keep uh, I keep Garnacho, especially if I know he's going to start, and then do João Pedro to Solanke. But as I discussed earlier. I, d I don't know about Solanke. I think he, he's a good pick. And maybe I'm just at the stage now where my brain is fried and I'm just overthinking everything too much. Because first five fixtures aren't bad for Spurs. Like Leicester away, Everton at home, Brentford at home. They get to play all of those. Could he get something against Newcastle or Arsenal? Possibly. And I'm sure he's going to start, as I've said already. But what will his minutes be like? Like 7.5. It's, it's a good price. But I think I think everyone else, not everyone else, but a lot of other people view him as... Not essential, but like such a good pick for 7.5, he's got to be in. I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. And I would think of it like this, right? Instead of Solanke, I could have like a Meniz or Chris Wood or someone like that. Maybe Calvert-Lewin, but probably not. Put him in. And then I could even do Garnacho to like a Gordon, for example, instead of going all the way up to Fernandez. And I've still got 0.5 to spend, which could be Barco up to a 4.5 million defender. Like Rico Lewis, maybe. I don't see me going for him, but there's a slight temptation there because if he gets the Ipswich fixture, it could be good. But long term, I know he's probably not going to play. It'll be Kyle Walker back in. But I could put someone in like Anya from Nottingham Forest. So it doesn't necessarily have to be those three, uh, those 4.5 defenders, Konza, Anya, and Robinson. But they're going to provide me pretty good cover over the first few weeks. And I've only got to play one of them because I'm pretty much going to play Trent and Porro in most weeks anyway. And then Rogers would be sat on the bench most weeks as well. Maybe I'd play him in game week one and bench Maniz. But either way, Maniz is going to get played most often. And if Rodgers does keep playing, his price will go up so quick, especially if he does really well early doors because there'll be a lot of transfer activity. There's part of me that just wants to set up with a structure like that. But there's also something telling me that Smith Rowe is just a really good option. So I could go for the 4.5 defender structure plus Gordon and do Rodgers back to Smith Rowe like I had before, and then do Meniz back to João Pedro. That also works too. But again, and this is where the tinkering comes in, right? It could also be Solanke up front. If you're listening on podcasts, this must be really difficult to follow. And then Gordon down to another 5.5. I don't really want um, two 5.5s, 
but it's just a perception thing, right? Jao Pedro and Gordon is this exact same money as Brereton, Diaz, and Solanke. So I'd only be play, uh, playing one of Brereton, Diaz, or Smith Rowe every single week. So it's a tricky spot. I feel like Isaac, Harlan, Saka, Eze, and Kunku, probably Poro and Henderson are definitely going to make it. Everyone else is still up for grabs. I feel, I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old and I'm misremembering, but it, it feels like by this point of pre season, I'm locked into far more picks than that. And I don't know, this season just feels difficult because of the uncertainty over people's minutes and stuff like that. And, you know, will they start game week one or not? And of course, you can go for a few risks, you can, but I don't want to take too many. And also, I've just realized, by the way, I, I'm, I'm slightly tempted to go for Kwanzaa as one of the 4.5s. If I set up with five playing defenders that aren't 4 million like Barco, I'd maybe take the risk on Kwanzaa then. I could play him game week one alongside Trent. It just blocks a third Liverpool spot. Like if I wanted to, like if I wanted to go for Jota and I didn't want to leave myself stuck for getting Salah, Kwanzaa would block it. But I just don't see that happening. I, I, I do, Unless Jota or Darwin or, or Diaz is going to continue playing, I'm just not going to go for them. I'm always going to be a little bit worried about their minutes. So maybe, maybe this is the kind of kind of structure to go for. It's difficult. I, I, I really, I, I honestly, I wish I could tell you right now where I'm going to land, but I'm, I'm really struggling. Maybe I need to decide on when to wildcard and just go from there. But honestly, I think game week six wildcard and leave the options open is the way to go. I think Brereton, Diaz and Smith are my favorite 5.5s. It gets me Solanke as well. And I've got that 4.5 million cover too. Maybe something like that. I, I just think ultimately Gabriel down will be the way that I do it. Because for Kwanzaa, right, for example, in 4.5, game week three, Man United away, Robinson's got Ipswich away, and Kwanzaa's got Leicester away. So I don't have to play him in there. And even if he lost his place, I've got Robinson or Kwanzaa to play every week anyway. But then, but then Barco, if he keeps playing, will be so good. This is the problem. Rogers, if he keeps playing, will be so good at 5 million. And by getting Rogers instead of Smith Rowe and Barker, that's a million to spend elsewhere. Where would I spend it? I'm not quite sure. Maybe back to Garnacho. That's all I'm really playing around with. The, the Gabriel spot, the Garnacho spot, and the Jao Pedro spot. Just quickly on Jao Pedro, oh, I don't think I can do it. Like last season, he looked great from the start and it just didn't work out. And I've got a feeling it's going to happen again. And I don't want to get to game week three and I'm unsure about his minutes and he's playing Arsenal away. I don't know. I think if I had to lock it in right now, I'm really unsure about the forward. I, this, I told you it was going to turn into a ramble. If I had to lock it in right this minute without giving it any more thought, I'd do that. I'll go Henderson, Kwanzaa, Trent, Porro, Eze, Brereton, Diaz, Saka and Kunku, Harland, Isaac, Solanke, and then the bench of formerly in goalkeeper Smith, Rowe, Robinson and Konza. Overall pretty strong. Who knows? I definitely want Haaland, though, because I want to captain him against Ipswich. I'm probably going to go without Salah. The only thing, again, quickly, although this is not quick at all, Salah drafts are great um, because it's just so easy just to fit everybody in apart from, of course, Haaland, which is the big miss. If I just quickly put this together now, Salah goes in. Uh, instead of smith I think I can afford Fernandez as well. If I drop Meniz back down to... I wouldn't even have to go to Fajal Pedro, by the way. If I want to keep a 5.5 million forward slot, it could just be Armstrong instead. And then you just drop Kwanzaa back to Barco. So for a, for a Salah squad, you're looking at Henderson. Let me just let me just make the transfers a second. Uh, it's much easier to view. You're looking at Henderson, Porro, Konza, Trent, Eze, Salah, Saka, Nkunku, Fernandez, and then Izak and Solanke up front. Like that... That overall squad, forget, forgetting about Haaland, just looks so much better. You've got so many more consistent picks, I would say, in like Slanky and Fernandez, rather than messing around with like Garnacho and Jao Pedro. I just don't know if I've got the bottle to go through game week two without Haaland. It does keep coming to me that if Haaland blanks that week or doesn't do that well, Salad Drafts will probably do better overall the first few weeks, but I just don't think I've got the bottle to go through with it. It's just such a better squad overall. I'm going to stop rambling. I don't know where I'm going to land. If you want to find out, join me on the deadline stream tomorrow. I'm not quite sure what time it's going to start, but it'll be at least two hours. It'll start at least 4.30 UK time, basically. Um, and I'll give some more thought tomorrow about exactly how I want to set up. Thank you for joining me throughout pre-season. This is going to be probably the last video now ahead of game week one, but there'll be plenty of content throughout the season. 
you have enjoyed it make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button as well we are on our way to 500,000 subscribers and make sure to check out sleeper links in the description below completely free app it's great you really should try it out you've got nothing to lose otherwise i'll catch you again tomorrow